Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin and Cardano. Bitcoin still or again above 40k and ADA again above a dollar. So in this video we're going to take a look at both charts, take a deeper look at them both and I want to show you something new in this video as well. Overall you can see that the whole market is red in the last 24 hours. Um, Bitcoin dominance currently just above 40 percent and the whole market really in the red. As always there are a few exceptions um, but I think nothing too noteworthy. Overall, the market is going down further as expected, even though with this current move up back above 40K, this is nothing too convincing at the moment. And I would expect still that we are in a correction. My view hasn't changed. So let's take a look at what the next moves could be. Overall, I think we are still here in this ABC correction, A wave two as per the Elliott wave method that typically can retrace into the region between the 61.8% Fibonacci level and the 88.7% Fibonacci level, um, especially for crypto. Many altcoins are already in the lower areas. Bitcoin has not even reached its target area yet. Yeah. And the Bitcoin 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level is sitting around 27k. And that is why I do have my target area here sitting between 20,000 pounds and 28 dollars and 28.7 um, K yeah, USD, because this is the area where I would expect that wave two to end before we see another rocket start to a new all time high. Also the lower end of this spectrum here, the lower end of the support area, 20 K, that is where we currently have running the 200 week moving average, a level or a moving average to which Bitcoin in any major drop has retraced to so far. OK, so we're currently here still in this scenario where I would primarily after this wave four that could be complete now, but it's not confirmed yet in this wave four after this wave four, which hit the target areas. Yeah, it hit the yellow target area um, that we are now coming down here in a um, beginning of an impulse already. So what you see here on the chart, an impulse always needs five waves um, or at least yeah as per the Elliott wave method we could hear what we see here already already seen a one two we are now in the three the four is still coming and the five is also still coming that is certainly a possibility and what we shouldn't forget is that the risk is still on the table that we're breaking here above 46 and k which is up here which is the resistance area of the yellow target box and if that gets broken then you can expect higher prices all the way up to 55, 65K before we are then going to come down into my yellow target area. So these are the two key alternatives, right? Or two key possibilities. One, that we're coming down here straight away in the target area. And the other one, that we're just taking an extended move up before we come down. So both possibilities, both also possible with the um, indicators. Yeah, if I look at the RSI, for example, but I told you in the last week or actually this week before you had the, the dip that the fight here between the bulls and the bears will probably be decided on the daily time frame. And what we can see on the daily time frame is that on the RSI, we dropped below the 50 line on the RSI. And that is exactly after we talked about it in the video, we had the drop and we had the first decision and the MACD also turned bearish. So that is what I did expect. And um, a few hours later, it did turn around. And since then, we have seen this red candle, this drop, which makes it much more likely that we are now in the pattern that I've got indicated here on the chart. This one, two, three, four, five, where we're going to land down there. We currently, if we go to the one hour chart, currently hovering below this um, descending trend line. You've got this channel here in which we're trading. You can see that or we were trading. And this channel has broken to the downside. Bitcoin is currently all it's doing is retesting this from below. I would expect a move soon, very soon. Yeah. Um, another decision point approaching because, you know, yesterday we talked about, I showed you this triangle trend continuation pattern. Yeah. You've got the descending trend line here and you had an ascending white trend line here. And I told you in the next few hours, you can expect a move probably down because the trend continuation pattern and that happened. Yeah. And I think we are approaching something similar again, this time a bit of a larger triangle. So you can expect a larger move. Yeah. Again, that should play out throughout the next few hours. What makes me quite confident that we're going to see another move is also that um, 
Bitcoin is not oversold anymore. It, it was oversold here on the one hour time frame. It had to retrace, which it did. And then we had another move. Now, not oversold anymore. So another move down can maybe already in the wave three target area. Let's see. Um, but as I said, the risk that we're moving higher here first is not off the table. We, everything is still possible here. Nothing is invalidated, really. Um, even on the four hour chart, we're not oversold anymore. So um, the, the situation or the probability that my primary scenario can here play out is still very, very likely in my view. Yeah, or more likely has become more likely recently again. Now, what else did I want to show you really? Um, if we zoom out, I mean, you can see this whole move down here and this really mirrors two moves that Bitcoin did before um, after recent or after previous peaks 2017 and 2013. Um, this is so-called, uh, if, if we compare these moves to back then, these are so-called fractals. And some people say you can't compare previous price moves to current price moves. I say you can, because this is the whole, the whole um, foundation, basically, or the whole idea behind the Elliott Wave method that you can actually predict the next price moves based on not only what happened before, but how a market usually moves. And as Bitcoin, how Bitcoin has moved in the past, it's very likely that Bitcoin does the same thing again. And therefore, I also expect us to land in this target area. Okay. So what you see here is after recent peaks, 2013, 2017, and now, okay, you can see that the market moves very, very similar. Um, you can see that there was always after the peak where we formed a W pattern here, 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 that there was also always a first initial strong dip. Then there was a counter reaction to the upside. Basically, that was here. We had one here and we had one here. Okay, for, um, for, um, yeah, for, for um, Bitcoin. Yeah. And then there was another strong dip here. That was 2013 here. Yeah. You had one here 2017 as well. And we had quite a strong one actually this time. So where are we now actually? We have since then moved up a little bit. Yeah, you can see that moved up and another move down, move down. And this ha happened again. So we're now here basically or here. This was a 33K point for Bitcoin um, this year, 33K down there you can see that that's the 2022 chart and we also had such a low here 2013 and you had such a low fairly significant peak back in 2000 sorry this was 2017 and also one in 2013. now what happened then we had a move up yeah remember we did also now very recently go up to 46k again this is this move this is where we currently are. So you had something similar here 2017 as well, another counter reaction to the upside. And we had something 2013 as well, which was, I think, even stronger than um, it happened this time. All right. So <laughs> what is happening now? If we say, right, we can we can identify that these moved in very similar ways, which is no surprise because if it's just not, uh, like an ABC correction, you can expect that. Now, just want to make you aware that this could really be a long period of moving down. Okay. If you can see what happened 2013, this took, I mean, from where the, the peak was to where we are now, this is only 50% of the way. That is how it was 2013. So it had the same length once more. Yeah. I had it to add it onto it. Um, and this was the low back here. Okay. And then you start a new uptrend. So we're pretty much, if we compare to 2013, we're only 50% there. Very similar to 2017. Also, we would be only 50% there. So we can possibly um, assume that, right, it might take a bit of a while, right? It could take maybe into Q2 even. This is just really to show you what happened the last few times. I'm not saying it will happen again like that. Absolutely not. But there are absolutely... Um, interesting, um, you know, the, you, you can compare it. Yeah, you can compare it. It's absolutely, uh, absolutely possible to do so. And if I adjust this, just to make sure that we can get a 
little bit of a, a better understanding. If I overlay this, okay, let me just see if I can do that because I have to adjust obviously some of the um, patterns here. So I think this is pretty much what it did. Um, I've put it here in white. Yes, yeah, so you can see it, I think, fairly clearly now. Had this W pattern up here, okay? W pattern, then you came down. You had your initial move down here with this green um, wave three. You can see that, yeah? Also here in gray, the other chart overlaid moves very, very similar. Now, then we had this recent, we had this recent move up here, yeah? where it actually moved a bit higher. So, you know, I, I can adjust it a little bit. doesn't matter in the end. And what we are doing now is probably what happened then as well. We moved down further and further and further. So you can expect some further price drops. Then what we could see is maybe another lower high. Yeah. And then uh, another boring period of sideways movements. Okay. Sideways, sideways, sideways. That could take into, if I just overlay this here, this could take into July 2022, yeah, before we then drop. And look at where it's ending here. I mean, it's ending just above my target area, but bear in mind, it's not 100% the same um, the same volatility and everything. So we get this final dip, okay? So it will be interesting. Um, let's see if this is playing out. I'm not saying it will. I'm just showing you that right it moved in the past in a very similar way we could have some more months be in front of us of board and i will you know if, if we have something like this this will be extremely boring because it will just move for months and months just sideways and the volatility will go down and yeah you will be able to draw here something like a triangle and that is then when bitcoin approached the breakout point and if you look at this i mean it's pretty clear that there would have been a breakout point because the price couldn't just have moved anywhere else anymore. Yeah. So it pretty much didn't move at all. And then you had a major dip. And then I think from here it went, then start, it started to go up again. That is really what I want to show you. I think highly interesting because people always ask how long can it take? And there aren't really many other ways how you can determine how long this correction could go. Um, my view was always, you know, it could finish in, in Q1 and it can still, but for to do that, in the next few weeks, we need to move that, make that move down. If we go higher once more and then come down, it will just take much longer. Okay, so we want to move down, finish the correction off before we then move higher. Looking at Ada, um, Ada has done here more sideways movement. If I zoom in to the daily chart, better the one hour chart. Um, so we just saw on the Bitcoin chart that Bitcoin moved below a, a trend line and is now retesting this for resistance. And yeah, Cardano is doing the same thing. We had here the $1 and two char, uh, support line. You can see how relevant this was. Yeah, $1 and two provided support here, 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 here. Here was a bit, um, it broke a few times, yeah, but then it really holds steadily above $1 and two. Now, obviously we've moved below it, yesterday when Bitcoin dropped below 39, uh, below 40K. It did come down, I think, to 30.4K. And ADA as well did come down below a dollar. Well, it has reclaimed the dollar level, but the dollar level is not that important for Cardano. It's more the $1 and two. As you can see here, we're currently retesting this previous support for resistance. And if this holds, then we can expect, I think, a further price drop from Cardano. And that was expected anyway, as I said yesterday here, a lower high. And we came down to the line and I said, look, if Bitcoin drops further, which it did, then you can expect was probably to see 92 cents. And I th still think that will happen, especially if we cannot reclaim here $1 and two. We can also draw here possibly a bit of a pattern here, maybe not a descending wedge, but in the end, you know, I don't like patterns too much, but they can be helpful in determining when a price is moving into an apex and when the price is going to, um, yeah, face resistance and has to make a more significant move to move out of a triangle or a pattern. And here we are approaching resistance, yeah? So the price is really at another decision point, pretty much like Bitcoin, which is currently retesting that um, former support for resistance. So I think here as well, in the next few hours, like Bitcoin, we can see a move. My view would be in the current environment and what um, Bitcoin is doing, because what Bitcoin is doing to the upside is currently not convincing. Also, ADA here, I mean, 
it's sort of bleeding out at the moment. Um, it is not convincing. So looking at the price action in itself, I would think that we are going to move down further. We're not only approaching resistance here at the $1 and $2 level, no. We're also approaching resistance here on the one hour chart, the RSI. Um, if it bounces off here on the 50 level of the one hour RSI, you can also expect further downside movement. I mean, we're here at resistance on the four hour chart. We are still deeply in the um, in the bearish range on the RSI. So also here further downside movement is expected. And if we take a look on the daily chart as well, also in the bearish range still, and also had another bearish MACD crossover here um, a few days ago for ADA. So all of that does not point towards a fast recovery at the moment, or that the correction is already over. I think we're going to head possibly really into this target area down here between 30 and 55 cents. Um, I think that is getting more likely. The longer Cardano is stuck here in this channel and is moving down. You can see this channel can really help Cardano to move into this area. If we drop below 92 cents, there is another support level around 80, no, um, yeah, around 80 cents, but um, this is not a Fibonacci level. And I think you always need to come down to these Fibonacci levels at least most of the times. So yeah, that is currently my view about Bitcoin and Cardano. When the correction is then finally over, yes, we can expect a five, maybe 10 X, I think for Cardano in the next major move up, like for all of the other cryptos that I cover here. Um, Bitcoin, I don't think we, we see a 10 X, but also Bitcoin, if the correction or when the correction is then finally over, um, the projections of the Fibonacci extensions, they tell us that we should see at least 100K Bitcoin, but maybe even more could go all the way up to 100K, 150K as well. And in an extreme case, even 250 wouldn't be off the table. But for that, we need to finish that correction in a clean way. Um, Cardano is a bit uh, beaten by the fact that it started the correction just earlier, that that's all it is. It started earlier and has since then just followed this correction path and Bitcoin started much later. And you can see that it's really following this previous um, this previous pattern really, doesn't it? So um, let's see if that is continuing like that. With us, you, you might have seen it here first. I don't know. I don't know if some other people talked about this as well, but um, I just really want to convey the message that markets move generally in very similar wave patterns. All right, so hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please smash the like button and subscribe. And if you really like the content, maybe consider to join as a channel member. You can do so on YouTube or my website, and you can find the links for that in the video description. If you join as a member, you can get access to Discord, Telegram, and a weekly live stream. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.